Let's talk some sports, baby. better than today and make today better than yesterday and you know what we gonna do we gonna holler at you until next time Stay all right guys let's go ahead and move over and check on the nba finals los angeles lakers put away the miami heat in games one and two and look to take a commanding lead after game three on sunday However, Jimmy Butler and other plans dropping a 40-point triple-double and propelling the Heat to a victory in Game 3, 115-104. The Heat held off multiple runs by the Lakers and avoided a disastrous 0-3 hole that no team's ever come back from. What's maybe more impressive is that the Heat doing so without Bam Adebayo and Goran Dragic. Adebayo should play in Game 4, but Dragic isn't going to be questionable. So, Drake, with Game 4 tonight, how can the Heat tie this series up, or was Game 3 just an aberration? <sighs> You know, I, I usually don't eat my uh, steak well done, but for this one, oh yeah, this steak well done, and let me get a Hennessy on the rocks. This series is going to be over, and here's the deal. All they got to do is basically double-team Jimmy and double-team Tyler Hero, and th this is over with. I, I don't have the confidence that the rest of the guys can get it done enough. You sitting here, you, you, you got your hint, you got the future of this series. If you take Jimmy Bull out, the future of this series is going to hinge on a not 100% Bam out of bio. If Gordon Dragic come back, a not 100% Gordon Dragic, a shaking Duncan Robinson, because he's been shaking in this series because he hasn't been able to get his shots off. And then you got a Miles Leonard that, that might be good for two quarters. You got a, 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 a Olenek. Hey, he going to give you two quarters, and then he going to go do the halftime show. Listen, you don't – I just don't feel like – Miami has enough if Jimmy Butler don't come out here with another world performance. That, that's just the bottom line. And it's, it, it, the reason that game three surprised so many people was because just like I just told you all that, you figured that's what the Lakers would do. But no, he, he go to the Lakers, he go Vogel, having a good old time, probably had one too many the night before. And instead of being locked in, Hey, guys, let's just go and double-team Jimmy Butler every play and make this 19-year-old rookie show us what he really got when every possession is on him instead of playing off Jimmy Butler. No, no, hey, hey, LeBron, don't worry about it. Hey, 80%, we should be good. Hey, Anthony Davis, listen, I know you know how to go straight up and down, but just curve a little bit. Give, give me three hot ones in the first quarter, and we'll just sit you down. Like, I don't know what the Lakers was doing in game three. But they wasn't locked in. They didn't get locked in until like the fourth quarter. It's like, oh, hey, guys, NBA Funders. <laughs> you know what it is. Hey, we might want to show up. Rondo, yeah, you got that being gay. Put something on your knees. We got to go. So, <laughs> we, you know, I'm watching this game um, Sunday, and I'm like, what, what, what is going on? Then they get the two-point lead going into the fourth quarter. I said, all right, now we cooking with gas. And then the gas got turned off, and then Jimmy Butler kept going, and then – the rest was that. And this thing I know Jimmy Butler saying, oh, y'all in trouble. <laughs> y'all in trouble. No. Hey, Jimmy, uh, you know, I'm a fan of you, brother. But um, you know damn well that, uh, that that statement, you was gassed up. You was feeling yourself. You was a little saucy out there. But the Lakers ain't in trouble. Let's call it what it is. They come and play the way they should, the way I think they're going to play for the rest of this series. This is over. I'm sorry. They don't have enough size to deal with a play team. That's just what it is. Sometimes, right, we watch these games, and it's not like Miami is, you know, sorry. They did beat the Bucks in five. You know what I'm saying? They did beat the Celtics in six. They did sweep the Pacers. So for what it's worth, this is not a like a bad team. They just don't have enough. They don't have enough. No, if the Lakers decided to like do some crazy lineup where they got like Javale McGee and Dwight Howard in, like how is, I don't, I don't get like what what do you do against that? You just hope they really, really slow and you can go around them. 
You you don't have your biggest guys, Miles uh, Leonard, uh, Leonard. Like, and that's only because you probably looking at his hair too. You add in the hair, yeah, he might be like what you know, six ten, six eleven, something. But that ain't gonna get it done. I'm sorry, Bam Adebayo, love you, good player. You deserve every accolade you got. I support everything you got going on. But you, that ain't enough. That ain't enough. I'm sorry. This is just, I'm, it's just not enough, man. So as I look at game four, game five, you know, congrats. At least they didn't get swept. I got to give them that. They didn't get swept. They came out here, showed some party, and, win, and won a game. But listen, it's no need to go over the stats because here's the deal. What I think is going to happen is Anthony Davis going to drop somewhere around 35 to 40. LeBron going to have yeah, about a 25-point triple-double, and it's going to be a blowout. Even with KCP leaving his game at the halfway house, even with Danny Green leaving his game with the Spurs, it don't matter because at the end of the day, they, I just don't think Miami has enough for a motivated Lakers team. I don't think LeBron want to deal with the criticism that he dealt with after the last game. And listen, LeBron said it best. They're not concerned because even when they had when they didn't play good offensively, they still was up by two at one point in the game. And they didn't play well offensively at all. And they didn't they didn't they didn't particularly play well on defense. And that's and that was all predicated on Anthony Davis getting in foul trouble very very early in the game. Had he not gotten in foul trouble, I think he stays in a rhythm and this game goes a totally different direction. But he did. So as long as he stayed out of foul trouble, this is a wrap. Put him in a Ziploc bag, throw him in the freezer. We'll eat it later. But this is over with. It is what it is. So, yeah, man, that's my it's, – it's over with. This won't be – it's not getting tired. This series will be over in five. Yeah, it's it's hard to it's hard to disagree with drink here because um this is just something I mean when you come out of game one and your second and third best player go down and you're already considered, you know, by most the underdogs, that, that's that's a lot to overcome. I mean, Bam Adebayo and Goran Dragic, we I don't want to undersell the value they have um to the Miami Heat. I think I think you could you could make a great argument that Bam Adebayo is their most important player, even though Jimmy Butler He's, I think he's unquestionably their best player and absolutely their leader. But Bam Adebayo does so much for that team. Um, he's an exceptional role man to the rim. He plays above the rim. I mean, he's a factor on the boards on both ends. He's the defensive anchor on that team. He's also an exceptional passer, um, made great strides. I mean, you look at one of the things that, that was interesting in that semifinal series against the Bucks. you mentioned, as, Yana, as uh, the Greek freaks free uh, foul shot declined, uh, Bam Adebayo was hitting his free throws at a high clip. And that's something he struggled with in the regular season. So he's a problem, and it's also a big problem that he's out, that he was out in games two and three. Um, hopefully he can provide a boost tonight. But even so, um, the Dragic out of bio pick and roll is something that has been highly effective um, in the postseason. And Dragic has probably been their best score in the playoffs consistently. Um, so it's hard, it's hard to imagine the Heat um, um, pulling off, you know, another one of these miraculous performances because that I think that's what it was and especially from the individual standpoint that was a performance I mean as great as Jimmy Butler is and as much respect as we uh, that we have for his game no one sees 40 points 13 assists and 11 rebounds no one had that dialed up on 14 of 20 I mean no one had that uh, but it just, just credit to him but it's just hard to see him having another of those performances which is going to take some exceptional play um, like that, maybe maybe you get Tyler Hero goes off to 30 tonight. But it's going to take – guys are going to have to exceed the normal expectations um, for Miami for them to make really make this a series, which they to me they have to win game four for it to re, uh, be a real series. I don't think they can recover from a 3-1 deficit. I don't. Um, so I think that if they want to really be in this series, they have to win a night. This is probably the series, much, as much as it was in game three. If they lose game three, the series is, in fact, over. Um, but it's just going to be one of those cases to have a chance. They're going to have to get crazy hot from three. Uh, they're going to need Jimmy Butler or Tyler Hero to just have a crazy game. Maybe it's Tyler Hero tonight. Um, but also, one of the things um, – listen, they got – when Bam Adebayo isn't in there, they, they can bring out big guys that can be problems 
for um, the opposition. You talked about Kelly Olenek. I mean, he gave you 17 points in game three. Myers Leonard is capable of hitting shots. Um, so they can do that, which can kind of counteract some of the Lakers' advantages on the inside. They got to play defense, Also, to too. that point, as much as the Heat have to, you know, overperform in areas, they, the, Laker, the Lakers have to cut them breaks just like they did in game three. Anthony Davis was subpar, 15 points, five rebounds. That's simply not enough. I mean, it, we, I mean, I think 30 and 10 is about the standard we have for him. And he was half of that. That's not enough. I swear, if Danny Green could hit shots, the Lakers would, the Lakers would sweep every series they're in. But Danny, Danny Green's the ultimate X factor, and he's probably the worst best shooter I've ever seen. Every time, I mean, every time you expect something from Danny, I mean, Danny Green is a great three-point shooter. And he just, oh, my Lord, time and time again, he just won't hit anything. And then you got all the, the how many more jokes that just abound on, on social media. How many more shots you're going to miss? You know, and then, I mean, Kuzma, Kuzma and Markeith Morris give those guys credit. I mean, they came up and they had some good performances. But, I mean, I, I agree with you. At, at maximum efficiency and capacity, the Lakers do win this series in five. But keep in mind, there's a little bit of history here. Miami, in 2006, they were down 0-2 to the Mavericks, and Dwayne Wade let them back. I don't think that happens again. But I don't know. We guess we have to see. And um, I, I think I don't think Jimmy Butler has that type of magic in him. But but it would be something to see. And I think I think there is some pressure on the Lakers. You can't lose this series with Dragic being out and Bam Adebayo being out and probably being somewhat right. compromised with the shoulder injury. There's some pressure there. And just one final point. And this is this is nitpicking, but I I, I got I got to say it, LeBron. I don't care how frustrated you are or what went wrong in the game. And I don't, and I don't want to hear the excuse they thought the game was God, over. You can't right leave now. the floor with 10 seconds to go. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. And you got to understand this. The only reason that – and I know he's, he's taking a little bit of heat from it, but if it was any other player, that they would get absolutely crucified. And, by, and, and, and more internally than probably the media. But it's LeBron, so he probably gets a little bit of a pass. But that's embarrassing. And then for the fact that the Heat, they had an intentional shot clock violation, to just, and then Frank Bogle has to insert three players into the game because you and two other guys walked off the floor, that's embarrassing. So, they, I mean, they got to come out locked in more than they were in game three, and they got to clean some of these things up. And I think they will. I think they get it done. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, uh, I agree 100%. Um, I, I don't. I, I, like you said, I, th- I think Jake kind of like summed it up perfectly. And you said that the Lakers have to play so down, right, to them, where, whereas the Heat have to elevate so much to get to like the low level for the Lakers. And it, it's just like, again, you, how do you, can you really expect Jimmy Butler to do that again? And if he doesn't, who else steps up to that degree? I mean, I think, again, the problem the Heat have had from the whole get go against the Lakers, the Lakers have two stars that can just go off and do their thing at any time. And they, the Heat really only have one, and he doesn't really do it every game. He only does it sometimes. And they've relied on that much more team ball. I mean, it works in some capacity. I mean, their defense against Anthony Davis was great. I mean, they, they changed up a lot of their scheme. And really, they just said, hey, we're just going to be physical. We're going to come out there. We're going to punch you in the mouth. We're going to body up on you. We're going to, you know, they drew some fouls on him early. And that seemed to work. Uh, obviously, he was much more limited. But can you rely on that every night? I mean, Anthony Davis has more than one way to beat you. Uh, just himself, and if he decides to share the ball more, and some other any of these other dudes that can just you know, also do the thing any given night, if they pick it up, where's where's the difference going to be made up? I, I just don't think the Heat can do it. Uh, I think they've been a great story, and it's funny that as soon as the, the first two games, LeBron, you know, they take care of business, and it's all oh, LeBron's got a cakewalk. This is nonsense, and then they lose game three, and it's, oh my god, are the Lakers in trouble? What, what could it could it be? Well, I thought it was a cakewalk. Now now they're. Now they're not. Which one is it? But uh, that's social media debates. You know how those go. But yeah, uh, keep it simple. Uh, keep it simple. Basically, as the, as the Lakers mo has been the whole year. If AD and LeBron decide they want to play and play that they can play, the Lakers are probably going to win. If one of them screw around, they're in a little bit of trouble. And they both screw around, they're probably going to lose. 